The brother asked a question that while talking about Buddhism, Brother Shweb, he mentioned that the books on Buddhism have been written 400 to 500 years later. And after that, in the scriptures of Buddhism, there is mention of Muhammad So he says that it's confusion that how could scripture written 400 years back be authentic? And if it's not authentic, how could the name of Muhammad Sallallahu come in? So if it's authentic and Muhammad Sallallahu name come, it carries weight. Because it's written 400 years later, it's logically, it cannot be authentic, point number one, that's the main argument. And if it's not authentic, how can the name of Muhammad Sallallahu be mentioned? And the point to be noted here, brother, that I do agree with you, that if something is written on the spot after revelation, the chances of it being authentic is more. But to say that if a book is written, 300 or 400 years later on, it cannot be authentic, is not 100% true because our hadith of Islam, the sayings of the Prophet, most of them were written 100, 200, 300 years afterwards. So if you use this logical argument for Buddhism, that Buddhism is wrong, then you have to agree all our hadith is wrong. But the difference between Buddhism and Islam is, that the world of a difference. In Islam, we have taken care of verifying whether the person who have narrated these hadith, the sayings of the Prophet, they have been verified, which has not been done in Buddhism. In Islam, whenever we say that a hadith is sahih, we check the narrators. Who heard it from Muhammad Who did he say to? Who were sahabas? Then it comes to tabayin. Tabe tabayin. Then we check the authenticity of each narrator and the memory of each narrator. So the science of maintaining the Islamic hadith is very superior and it is scientific. Unlike other religions. That is the reason we today in Islam can differentiate a Sai Hadith from a Zaif Hadith and a Modu Hadith, which is not the case in the other religions, including Buddhism. So Buddhism, what we have today, we agree that everything on the Buddhist scripture is not authentic. It's not hundred percent authentic. But there may be some parts which are authentic. So what we assume that even though we agree that the whole Buddhist scripture may not be authentic, we say that. But the Buddhists, they say it's the word of God, or oh, it's authentic. So what we say, okay, if you agree everything is authentic, in it is mentioned the thing, the Prophet So what we say that whatever matches with the Quran, or with the Sai Hadith, we Muslims have no objection in accepting it to be true. Similarly, when we compare Quran and Islam with the other religious scriptures, because we compare that does not, we are testifying that the complete religious scripture is authentic per se. What we are saying, that we agree part of it is correct, part is wrong. The opposite party, they are saying everything is correct. So what we say, even if we assume everything is correct, why don't you follow what is common based on the verse of the Quran of Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64, which says, Ta'ala ila kalmitin sawa imbayna baynakum. Come to common terms as we ascend you. Which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. So what Dr. Shweb did, he tried to tell you that the whole scripture per se of Buddhism may not be authentic. Because these, if you analyze how was the Buddhist scriptures compiled, it's not in a scientific manner. There was a council held, and one of his disciples, Ananda, his things were taken. So it differs. All the things differs. So they don't have a scientific method as we have in the religion of Islam. That is the reason the saying of the Buddhist scriptures, the historians, they say everything is authentic, which cannot be said of the hadith. But your argument that because it was written 400 years back is wrong, the chances of it being false is high. So therefore, whenever we take out a fault in other religion, be careful that we don't trip ourselves. If we put this as a trump card, that because it is written 400 years by the authentic, then all our hadith we have to discard. Which we don't agree with. But the argument is that we have taken care in preserving what is right, what is wrong. But yet, the Quran carries the highest weight, because the moment it was revealed to Prophet Muhammad he dictated it to his companions, who wrote it down and it was preserved. But the hadith preservation is also scientific, alhamdulillah, but it has a different level altogether as compared to the Quran. Hope that answers the question.